I'm Murray Newlands and welcome to another episode of How to CEO. In this show, I'm going to be looking at what CEOs need to know about VCs and their business model. When you decided to become a CEO, the world changed. You can build a billion dollar company or you can crash and burn. In this show, we're going to give you the knowledge, the advice, the skills, and the expertise to build a billion dollar company. So what is it the CEOs need to know about venture capitalists and their business models? Well, one of the things that early investors or early founders uh, don't know is, and don't really understand, is what their business model is. Venture capitalists raise money from different sources. The traditional uh, fund, though, is fund they raise money from pension funds, from uh, maybe uh, super affluent individuals. And they uh, put that work, money to work, to invest in startups. Let's take a, a and we need to understand about different size funds and different types of LPs. So that's the traditional model. Other investors, for example, will raise money from corporates, corporate investors, corporate LPs. They will have a different set of criteria. When those investors are raising money, they will be pitching, I'm going to invest this money in this type of company. Here's why I'm going to invest it, and here's what I'm looking for. That could be I want specifically just capital returns. Just make me the most money for that money. If you're doing investments on behalf of a corporate, though, it could be that they want to invest in a specific sector so they can find out about the sector so that they can find new customers, so that they can find new opportunities, so they can find investments that are going to disrupt the industry, so that they get to invest and maybe buy those companies later. So those investors, their uh, VCs, will have sold a particular story to their investors. So when you're pitching investors, you need to really understand what is their investment thesis. And that's something that you should uh, ask, find out about very early on in the stage. If an investor, for example, has raised, raised lots of money for Coca-Cola, who want to invest in soft drinks companies, there's no point in pitching them your IoT bike. They're just, they're never going to be able to invest in it. What are they trying to do with their fund? What return are they trying to get? So think about a $100 million fund. They probably want to save a third to half of that for follow-on investment. So then they have, let's say, $50 million to invest if they want to have the rest of it for follow-on investments. Let's say they've just started the fund. Do they, how many investments do they want to make out of that? $50 million they've got left for early investments. Well, if you've only got uh, $50 million to invest in early investments and you want to spread it over 10 investments, then you've only got $5 million to invest in 10 companies. So they're probably only gonna write you a $5 million check. It's unlikely that a $100 million fund is going to write you a $10 or $20 million check because too much of their fund is gonna be wrapped up in that one investment and then they're not gonna be able to do follow-ons. So the risk is too high for them there. So find out how big is the fund. Another thing is, how new or old is the fund? If they've just raised it uh, very, very recently, they have no time pressure. The fund is old and it's coming towards the end of the fund and they've invested most of the money. They probably want to wrap it up quite quickly and so they'll probably be keener to invest faster potentially. Also think about their business model. Traditionally, it's uh, described as they want to, for example, make You've got $100 million, you want to make 10 investments. One of those investments has to return at least the fund, if not more. So what does that mean? Well, if you raised a $100 million fund, if you're going to do that $5 million first investment, you're looking at that $5 million investment to give you more than $100 million in return. If you invest uh, in your startup, that means the $5 million in your startup has to be worth more than $100 million uh, when you sell or exit. 
that means that you're going to have to build a billion dollar company in order for that five million dollars to give you the kind of return they're looking for to be a big return on the fund. Why is your one investment out of those 10 going to have to give the return? Because they're betting that only one of those 10 will actually have a big exit. What does it also mean for you as a startup? It means that they want that to happen fast. If they're investing early stage, it can take five, 10, 15 years for that company to uh, exit. So you need to have a plan as to how you're going to become a billion dollar company really fast. They don't want to hold on to that money for 25 years. That doesn't help anyone. Also, you have to have a big exit. If you're raising money, let's say you're raising money at a $20 million valuation, you're uh, committing 25% equity, you're giving your you're hoping for $5 million for that. If you then sell your company for $100 million, you're not going to give them a big enough return. So what that also means is that if you sell your company for 30, 40, let's say you raise it $20 million and you sell your company for 50, $60 million, for you as a founder, that might be a great outcome. For them as a fund, that's a terrible outcome. You're in one of the losing buckets as far as they're concerned for the return the fund stake. So what does that mean for you as a founder? Well, that means you're going to have to commit to building a big company. So for example, when I was speaking to uh, Vivek from Mayfield in one of the much earlier podcasts I did, if you go in and you're trying to raise a, a decent sum of money and you say to a traditional fund, hey, I have interest in, in people buying me at this stage, um, I think I'm interested in that. I could take the money and I could sell for $100 million. That's actually a really negative sign for them. You want to be saying, hey, I'm having these offers, which is a great thing, but I'm completely turning them down because I'm building this big company. Here's why. Here's why I'm going to be successful. Here's why I want to raise money. So really think about uh, when you're looking at different funds, why you're taking that money and why your investment lines up with theirs. If you're raising money as, as opposed to that from individuals or from maybe a family office or directly from a corporation, they might have other outcomes might work for them. If you have a 50 to $100 million outcome, that might be sufficient for them. They might be really happy with that. So you need to think about what's going to be a great outcome for you and a great outcome for them. Because if you don't want to, if you want to build $100 million, $200 million company, then traditional VC investment might not be for you because it doesn't align with you with what they want. And you'll be pushed in different directions. I'm Murray Newlands. You have been listening and hopefully watching on the YouTube channel, the How To CEO Show. Thank you for subscribing. Please share with your friends and I'll see you next time.